you do crest a hill at one point. Mm -hmm. And as you crest it, you notice a lot of the ruins that you've been kind of in and amongst this entire journey give way to a bit of a clearing. But then in the middle of that clearing, there's a concentrated group of wall, of broken walls. Um, and for the first time since fighting the, the head creatures, you hear a sound. And you hear just this pulsating sound, very similar to the same pulse that you heard coming from the cracks in the ground in Ferrith. This think, is not good. I think that's what we're looking for. Probably. You guys know what this is? Well, we heard the same sound when we were in the town, when like the ground opened up and everyone went crazy, like, yeah. And if you noticed, it's, everything has been silent. Mm -hmm. And now this is the pulse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what should Let's, we do? I don't think we can be sneaky at this point. It's no. What are we going to do? Surprise. I think we just have to head over. Okay. So Let's you guys are walking straight in? Is it a long thing down? Um, you're probably looking at roughly a quarter mile away at this point. Yeah. And it's just all downhill? It's not like downhill. I mean, you know, it, there's some level planes. Some go down, some up. I mean, it's rough. It, it, overall, there's a bit of a downward incline. Okay. Can I just look at it and see what I can tell just by looking at it? Uh, go and make a perception check, yeah. 16. 16. You look, there's a lot of rock walls, a lot of broken But is, does walls? it seem to be like, yeah. a, like a building in the middle of nowhere, or? I mean, it's not in the middle of nowhere. There's other buildings past it as you look past. However, there's just, there's this cleared out area where there aren't, um, you know, kind of more packed in ruins and then these ruins kind of in the center of this area. And then, you know, another few hundred feet past, there's, you know, more ruins that continue as far as you can see. Right. Maybe we should be sneaky as mm -hmm. we approach. We should try. For whatever reason. Um, I'll do, I'll do pass without trace on us. Okay. So mark off that spell slot. Let me have everyone roll stealth checks, please. Plus 10. Plus 10. Uh, please be good. Okay. 23 for Hyde, 30 for Luna. All right. Siki? 23. 23. Good morning. Um, 27. 27. Nice, everyone. 28. 28. Okay. Yeah. 22 for Erevin. Um, so you guys make your way down, taking your time, picking your spots, um, and remaining mostly silent the entire way down. As you get closer and closer, the sound of the pulse continues to get a little bit louder and louder. As you get to the beginning of these ruins set in the middle of the clearing, peek around the corner and you see somewhere in the middle there's a glowing light that is pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. You can't see anything yet other than just shadows and, and beams of light that are hitting other walls around some central area that you can't quite see yet. So right now we're like peering over a, a you're, wall. You're peering around like the first wall in the ruins um, and there's more layers and layers in, but from here you can see somewhere in the center casting light and shadow out, uh, there's some pulsing source of light. Let, let's keep going sneakily. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys inch closer, closer. What's your marching order right now? I think I'm still in front. I'll go. <laughs> me and Luna. Lead. Mm -hmm. Oh, you? you and okay. Luna. I'll go after that. Okay, and Erevin's picking up the rear. Okay. You guys get closer and closer, and eventually you get to where you could hear it very loudly, and along with that sound, you hear a voice muttering words in some language you don't understand. You feel like you're at the last wall between you and whatever the source is. Can we see it? Can't yet, but there's an opening a doorway, um, an archway of sorts, that you do see a little ways down the wall that you could peek around if you wanted to. Okay, I'll try. Okay. I'm very big, but I'll like... Okay, <laughs> yeah, peek go ahead and shell. roll another stealth check, but you still got your plus 10. <laughs> okay. Siki, what are you doing? Nothing! 12. 12, <laughs> all right. So, Sorry. <laughs> you peek your head around, and as Hyde asked this, you call back. Nothing. 
<laughs> in a voice that you hope is quiet. Okay. Um, but you peek around the corner, and what you see is an interesting sight. There is a little bit of an opening courtyard type area with different walls that are broken down, um, and then steps that lead up to what would have been a building at one point, but has just been destroyed and broken all around, leaving somewhat of a raised platform. On the top of the platform, you see a table of sort, or perhaps an altar, and there's something laying across it. In the corner, there's a table with a lantern, but that's not where the source of the light is coming from. The source of the light is coming from the other side of a cloaked figure that is standing with its back to you as it stands in front of this table or altar with the creature laying across it. It's hooded, black long robes, and you can see a pulsing light coming from without it as you hear words being muttered. And as you sit and stand there and look, you suddenly hear, you might as well come in. You've come all this way. Do I recognize the voice? Make a, uh, make an You were right. Do you recognize the voice? Insight? Yeah. Or no, just wisdom. Wisdom check. Can it be insight? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I said okay. insight first. Fifteen. Fifteen. It sounds familiar. It sounds young. Okay. It sounds like a friend. Uh, is Hyde right behind me? Are you right behind her? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm gonna like peek back and be like, I think it's the guy, the cleric guy. The, the appendix guy? Yeah. He's like standing over a dead body. Ervin like, comes up at this point. Oh, Ervin, Ervin starts to walk past you. He's like, it's Megan? And he like pushes past can you guys. I, can I You go to stop him? him? Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll a, uh, roll a strength check. Okay. Natural 20. I'm going to stop him you and stop grab him. his yep. mouth so you he doesn't You grab him, speak. you get an arm around him, and you just... Whatever this is, it may not be mech, and it may be, but we need to be really quiet because this is the core of all the evil. Do you understand? You gotta be quiet. You can't run out. I'm going to let you go, but you can't run. You feel intense, but kind of subside. Can, I, can I do still. like an insight check to see if I if he's gonna run if I let him sure. go or something? Sure, go ahead know. and roll check. That would be ten. Ten. He nods. It's hard to tell. Please don't run. You're gonna ruin our plan if you do. Let him go. We gotta. All right. We have to get in there. We have to help him. If it if it is Mekin, he is the one that's causing all of this. You don't know that. You don't know anything yet. We need to talk to him. Okay. I kind of feel like he's beyond talking. Maybe that's just me. He's inviting us in. He already knows I that know, we're here. I know, but he's, he's evil. Like, he... We don't know you what he's doing. Him. I will talk to him. Yeah, talk to him. Okay. All right. He can't. Go ahead. We're going to wait. We're, we'll wait behind this. Okay. And you talk to him. All right. So he turns the corner and steps out. Are you guys watching or are you just listening? I, we're guess, watching. I guess we're, we're watching. watching. So, you're watching the corner. There, yeah. so he steps out into the courtyard. The I'm going to have my figure, in by bow. You have, a, you have a bow ready? Yeah. Okay. The cloak figure does not turn around, but kind of gives a little head turn. And uh, I was hoping you wouldn't be here. And you hear Ervin like, Beckon, you have to, <laughs> whatever you're doing, you have to stop. I, you, you are not ready for magic of this level or whatever it is. I can help you. I'm, I can help you understand what's, what's, whatever it is that's going on, and Mekin kind of sighs, and it's, I don't blame you. I don't have any ill will towards you, but you can't be here right now. You don't know what's happening. As he says that, I'm gonna whisper to you guys, you never let the bad, the bad guys talk too much. Yep, they start monologuing. And I am at him with my bow, and I fire an arrow. Before he does that, okay. I'm going to touch him and cast protection from evil and good. Okay. And before it reinteractively, can I hunter mark him? Uh, <laughs> I haven't rolled yet. He hasn't okay, rolled. okay, okay. So you, you put a hunter's mark mm -hmm. on him, uh, and then you turn the corner. You put 
protection of good e from good and evil on yes. him. Yes. Yep. What does that do to me? You are protected against aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Anything that is a creature of those type have attack have disadvantage on attack rolls against him. He can also cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed. Okay, good to know. And it's just so, me or me or Luna? Just, just me. Just you. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so you release an arrow. Go ahead and roll an attack. Uh, sh 21. 21. That definitely hits. So go ahead and roll your damage with Hunter's Mark. 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. All right. So the arrow sinks deep into the shoulder of the cloaked figure who... Ah! I knew it was you. <sighs> you you're just a silly kid. <laughs> okay. He kind of turns around, and as he turns, you see a cloaked. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. All right. He turns around, and as he turns, you don't see a face, but you see a mouth underneath, and Gamork. You suddenly very much recognize the pale face and the hooded figure of the person that banished you to this wasteland. Can I just like immediately like run towards him? <laughs> At this point, with everybody wanting to take actions and him turning around, let's roll initiative. Okay. Let's do it! <laughs> I knew it was him! <laughs> yep. Initiative orders. 13. 13, so Seeky. Wait, I go first? You are gonna go That's first. Not good. It's probably good if we're all in like the bottom Five to half. 10? Nine. Nine? Seven. Erevin at the back. Mekin will start. He will look out at Erevin and he will cast oh, a, bad idea. a bit of magic out at him and all of a sudden flames burst up around Erevin. Erevin fails his save. Oh, no. So he takes... Erevin takes six points of damage. Well, that's not so bad. As he <laughs> bursts into flame very quickly and kind of shrieks and steps back, and, ah, Mekin, why? <sighs> Mekin is then going to take a little step back and he's gonna look to the side and he's gonna throw his hood back because I am not playing with that thing up the entire <laughs> time. <laughs> and he's gonna look over to where the table was and he's gonna be like, hop. You know what to do. And you guys look over to the table and there's a little frog sitting there. And suddenly the frog <laughs> morphs into this tiny evil looking creature with sharp teeth and long ears and a long tail, standing on its hind legs, kind of brandishing these little claws in your direction. It is then going to go invisible. Huh? You gotta be kidding me. That is the end of Mekin's turn. Uh, Siki. Okay. How far away am I? You are currently 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 feet away. Good. So I'm gonna cast Spiritual Weapon. All right. So your hammer, born from butterflies and energy of the earth around you, Appears Go right behind him. Right behind him. And I'm gonna smash him with a hammer. All right. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and roll an attack. All right. So spell attack. Ah, uh, that would be eight. Eight misses. Yeah. It as does. it comes down and he kind of sidesteps to the last minute. He's like, <laughs> Ziki, I've seen that before. But have you seen this? And I'm gonna cast firebolts. <laughs> all right, firebolt out at him. All right. Uh, and have you moved at all to get a better line of sight, or are you still kind of standing behind? I was. Hide? Oh, I thought I was in the doorway first. Nope, that's fine. Um, can I still see him? You can, but it's kind of like over Hyde's shoulder, so you're gonna be trying to snipe around Hyde to get to him. Spiritual weapon was different because you could see a point and make it. Appear right. Here. Can I? Can I have said that I moved? Like yep. In fact, you can come over. around this wall. Oh yeah, I can do that. Over yeah. Here. yeah, that's what I want to yep. do. Okay. Yep. Now I want to do fireball. Okay. Go and roll your attack. Okay. So attack. This be better. That's much better. Twenty-one. That hits. Go and roll damage. All right. D tens. D tens. I like that. Yeah. All right. That's ten. Yes. All right. So that's gonna be eight points. 
Eight fire damage. Points of fire damage. Nice. He blah, takes it in the chest and kind of rears, stumbles back him in, looks at him and he goes, Siki, I don't want it to come to this. I like you. We don't have to do this. I liked you too, but I think you're evil. So that brings us to Hyde. Question. Can I use an action to dip my arrow in the troll um, blood and then use my second action to shoot that arrow? Because your first action would not be an attack? No. Okay, got it. Cool. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to hop on Luna. Okay, so and you then... spend 15 feet. Yep. Well, actually more because you have to get back to her. So 5, 10, 15, and then the, so that's all of your movement to get up on her. Okay, and we're going to get ex, as close to him as we can. 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, She has 50 40, feet 45, of limit. 50, okay. right here. Okay, cool. Um, as I'm there, I'm going to shoot uh, both of my arrows at him. Okay, so you take two arrow shots. Mm -hmm. First one is 20. 20 does hit. And actually, sorry, it's 22, but 22. Yep, and he's super smart. <laughs> that's going to be nine plus a d4. That is 11. 11 points of damage, nice. And then the other one is 20. 20, that hits. Okay. That's going to be 12, 16 points of damage. 16 points of damage, nice. So two arrows <laughs> into his side and he stumbles and he's like, ah, ah, ah. Ah, that hurts! Oh! Ah. Ah. He looks at you. Why are you doing this? Is someone making you do this? Because I will kill you. That's all you get out before the end of the journey. <clears throat> Gamorg! Alright, so I move up. I don't know how many feet this would be. Uh, six squares. Six squares from where I was. Oh, from here? That'd be like one, two squares to get to the doorway. Two. Like, so three. Yep. It's like, I come in the doorway and I'm like, remember me? And, and then I... goes, oh, crap. <laughs> and then I run, so... Well, you only have, you use 10 feet of movement to get up there, so you only have 20 feet of movement left. 20. Mm -hmm. So, if I go, if I use my dash and then action surge, I could get up. You could get pretty close, yep. So I'm gonna use my dash. So okay. that'd be another That's a whole another thirty feet. Thirty ish, yep. So I go there. Okay. And then I'm gonna um, yeah, use action surge. Okay. And throw my hand axes at him. Alright, so go ahead and roll your two attacks. Okay, so Oh no. So that's a natural one, and Ooh, a seven. Oh, I thought that's that was better. another one. I thought so too. We'll just cut those. <laughs> so that'd be a thirteen. Thirteen. So the first axe goes wide. The second axe heads straight for him, and at the last second, he turns towards you and goes yeah, and throws up an arcane shield, and the axe ping off of it as he burns a spell slot to avoid the attack. <sighs> okay, that's all I got. All Something's right, what's going on with this? Mm -hmm. All right, that brings us to Erevin, who is going to look up at him and go, whatever you're trying to do, I'm going to undo it. And he reaches forward and you see a pulse of energy go out. The, all this time, there has been a bit of a glow coming from that area, that same pulsing glow. And as you see Erevin, push out like this, all of a sudden the glow disappears and dispels. And was the glow around. coming from like his hands? Was he doing something? Not his hands so much as just kind of a general presence about him. Uh, and Mekin kind of looks like, ah, no, 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 no! Looks down at him. That brings us to Mekin's turn. He looks at you guys and goes, all right, that's, no, that's close enough. He reaches out, closes his eyes, and you feel the ground shake and split and crack. And all of a sudden, flames burst up in this area right here. And all of a sudden, two shapes leap up out of the crack, land on all fours. 
looking at all of you as two wolves wreathed in fire find their way onto the battlefield. Oh. Ooh. Oh, there's some big wolves. Some big fire wolves. Mm-hmm. Oh no. They look around <sighs> at all of you. At the same time, a creature, the demonic creature, suddenly becomes visible right in front of Erevin as it into view and goes to bite at him. And that is a 15 to hit, which does hit. Erevin takes 10 points of damage as the creature bites and latches itself onto his throat. <gasps> what? And just kind of <sighs> is like on him and holding him there. And Erevin's like <gasps> trying to gasp and take in air, but is unable to really do much at the moment uh, with this creature biting onto his throat. At the same time, the hellhounds that have now jumped up out of the uh, abyssal crack uh, all turn towards you guys. Let's see here. Siki, you will be the recipient of the first hellhound as it looks at you and breathes in and then spews fire out at you. Oh. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, it's gonna be interesting. That's a 12. 12 is the DC, so you take half damage. Okay. You take 10 points of fire damage as it breathes fire out at you, uh, and you're able to turn at the last minute and block most of it with your shell. Um, On the other side, Hyde and Luna, the other one breathes fire out at you, and I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw for each of you. Oh my god. That is an eight for Hyde and like a six for Lunar. So okay, like so you will take full damage. Mm. Mm. Uh, 22 points of fire damage to the both of you Ooh. as you are engulfed in hellfire from, these cre- from this creature and are burning. That will end Mechan's turn, and will bring us to Sikia. Uh, Why not? I'm gonna hit the thing on the table with my spiritual weapon. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack. Let's see what that does. Well, that's a natural one, so that doesn't do anything. It comes down and whiffs, because you can't quite see exactly the, the distance, and hits the stone next to him, and Mechan kind of jumps a little bit and turns, and he's like, what, what are you doing? I don't, I don't get it. You will. And I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at the ugly monkey. Okay, Guiding Bolt at the little creature. All right, please be better than it was. That's a 10. 10 misses, unfortunately. The Guiding Bolt goes wide as you are trying not to hit Erevin at the same time, and you don't quite get the the angle right. Okay. And... Can I back? Can I back around along the edge of the wall? I just want to get like a wave from the hellhounds if I can. Are you heading towards me or away from me? Wait, it, would there be a hellhound like right on me? The hellhounds because are one here. Took a, oh no, he just breathed. Yeah, he fire. breathed at you. Yeah. Okay, I just want to get like away from them, like towards the wall. You want to go that direction? Yeah. Okay, you can come all the way over here. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. All right, that brings us to Hyde and Luna. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to cast uh, Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. Your action. Mm-hmm. That's three. That's going to be seven. Oh, oh that, okay. I thought you read a different number. All right. Um, and then I'm going to go on top of Luna again. You're still on her. Okay, got it. Yep. Cool. So we are going to come over here to get a little coverage. Okay, you can go and move your mini there. Move that direction. That's it. All right, that's your turn. Gamorg, you're up. Okay. I am going to um, run all the way up. Mm -hmm. So five, 10. It's about 20 feet, yep. And I currently don't have a weapon and Gamorg is just gonna tackle him. And just okay. try to grab one and knock him to the ground. Roll, roll strength check. 
You don't have your scimitar? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's on my back. Okay, got but it. But I just threw You're my hand axes, so yeah, I'm just sprinting. That would be 22. You grapple him? And are you trying to tackle him? Or? I want to, like, get him on the ground. Okay. He like, rolled with... a natural one. Okay. So you can do anything you want, basically. <laughs> okay. So I get him on the ground where I've got, like, my forearm on okay. his neck. Okay. So you're pushing him into the ground. Yeah. And you're on top of him. Yeah. And, All right. Um, and then I'm just like, call off your dogs right now, or I'll kill you. God, looks up at you. Uh, make an intimidation check with advantage. Um, intimidation, 11. 11, okay. So you say that, he looks fearfully up at you. We'll see what he does on his turn. Okay. All right. And I also, like, I have my weapon out, and I've, I've like, I've got him down with forearm, and I've got my scimitar. Okay, so you're pinning him with one arm. You've reached back and pulled the scimitar out with the other yeah, hand. Yeah, like, right okay. up in his face. Okay, cool. That brings us to Erevin. The creature is attached to his throat at the moment. Uh, he is unable to speak or really cast any spells, he's going to spend his action attempting to get the thing off of him, uh, which he does succeed with. Well, let me double check. He fails at. Rolled an 18 and then a 19 for the creature. So uh, he attempts to throw it and it's got its teeth into his throat and he uh, it hurts too much and he, he's stuck there, essentially throat grappled by this tiny creature. Um, that'll be his turn, and that'll bring us back to Mekin. So Mekin looks up at you, Gamorg, and is like, I'd like to, <laughs> believe me, but you don't know what's going on here. And all of a sudden you feel a pressure against the armor in your side as Mekin is attempting to stab you with a dagger that he has pulled out. So the attack will be a disadvantage, and that's a natural two. So it hits your chainmail and turns, and you can tell what he was trying to do, but he's unable to make purchase with it. Okay. Um, the creature attached to Erevin's throat is going to actually let up and try to bite at him again. Uh, that is going to be 14, which hits. Takes 13 points of damage. And Erevin is looking a little rough at the moment as he is sinking down to one knee Holy, this creature's blood just starting to pour out from around his neck. And then the hellhounds do not get their breath back. Um, however, they are going to rush forward. They would have seen you go around that side. So they're gonna split, and one's gonna come at you, Hyde, and one's gonna go at you, Seeky. Also, quick question. Yeah. Are they aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead? They are fiends. They have disadvantage on attack rolls against Good note. Hive, not Good Luna. Note. Now, is that a concentration hive. spell? Yes. Can you roll a quick concentration check for me? Yes. Because you took damage from the breath weapon. Yeah. So your DC is 10. That would be 20. Okay, so you maintain that. Yeah. And you had Hunter's Mark up, right? Mm -hmm. So could you roll a quick concentration check as well to see if you maintain that? Your DC is also nope, 10. Nope, natural one. Okay, so Hunter's Mark has dropped from mm -hmm. Mechan. Yep. All right, so the one headed towards you, Seeky, is going to take an attack. That is going to be a 24 to hit. Yeah. So you take six points of piercing damage from the, from the bite itself and an additional eight of fire damage as its teeth sink into you and it burns all around you as the thing is completely wreathed in fire. Hide at disadvantage. Um, it is a 13 to hit you. That misses. So that does miss as it snaps out at you, and it would have hit, but there's this, all of a sudden, this divine shield that kind of almost pops up out of nowhere, uh, almost like a, like, a, like a force field around you that the teeth hit and knock it the other direction. Um, that will be the end of the enemy's turn. Siki, you are up. Okay. Um, I'm going to take my healing potion. Okay, so bonus action to take your healing potion. Bonus action. Do I add anything to this? Like uh, it's whatever's on the label. I think it's 2d4 plus, plus two. two. Yeah. yeah. All right, please be good. Okay, that's good. Um, so that's 10 points back. You roll two fours? Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clutch. Yeah. All right. Um, so that was bonus action? That was your bonus action. Okay. And 
action. Um, there's a hellhound right in front of me? There is. It's in, engaged with you. Okay. Oh, it's engaged with me? Yes. Okay. I'm going to bite at it. Okay. <laughs> it bites at you and you bite back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so roll your attack. Uh, that's a 13. Uh, 13 unfortunately misses. Ah, okay. You hit its hide, uh, but it's thicker than you expect. You, like, you thought maybe these things were made of fire, but there seems to be something corporeal here. Oh, okay. And that's my turn, I guess. Okay. Uh, that'll bring us to hide. All right. So I'm going to take my healing potion. Okay. Bonus action. Come on. That's going to be six. Six points back to you. All right. And then as my action, I'm going to hop off Luna. Okay. And um, I'm going to say... I was hoping it didn't have to come to this. And then I'm gonna feed her the potion of growth. Ooh, You're gonna give nice. Luna the growth potion. <laughs> nice. Yep. Giant and she's giant. gonna grow twice her size. Okay. And it's gonna weigh four times her weight. Um, yeah. All right. And I believe it adds a D4 to all her damage. It does, D4 okay. to all her damage. Okay, so you. Please kind of, be good, girl. Kind of like we've all had the experience of giving a dog a a shot or a, a pill or something, you have to kind of like tip her neck real quick and shove the potion down her throat as she doesn't know how to sip from a glass vial. Uh-huh. Uh, but she takes it and all of a sudden, and she just grows. It's like almost like watching her inhale, but then she doesn't stop inhaling. Her chest doesn't stop expanding. And all of a sudden a Luna, two times her normal size, mm -hmm. appears and is now where once was eye to eye with this hellhound is now towering over top of it. Mm -hmm. All right, and how long does that last for? Um, it's one D4 hours. Okay, so go ahead and roll so. a quick D4. One hour. One hour, so for the next hour, she's two times her size. Probably. Okay. That's probably good, <laughs> totally. yeah, I would assume. All right, that's your turn. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to Gamork. Okay, so since I haven't pinned, yeah. am I, do I have advantage? You would absolutely have okay. advantage, yes. So I'm gonna just, Go ahead and like stab at him with my scimitar. Okay, where are you hitting him? Like right in the face. Right in the face. Ooh, Ooh. That, okay. that has to be bad. Roll an attack. At advantage? With all the advantage, advantage. in the world. That would be a 23. That definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Uh, seven points of slashing damage. You bring the one end of your double-bladed scimitar down and you hit him in the cheek. It pierces through, goes through the cheek and into the stone behind him, essentially pinning him for the moment by the face Oof. to the stone beneath. He cries in pain. <laughs> and it's it's pathetic almost. It's, it's the cry of a child who is in pain. And he kind of like, one eye opens up, he's like, he can't even move his mouth to talk. It's it's too. It hurts too much. He's just looking at you. Tears are beginning to stream down his face as he is stuck to the ground by his face. Good. All right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Ooh, got more. Is that your turn? Uh, yes, that is my turn. Okay, that brings us to Erevin. He's going to try and shake off the creature oh, again. Um, and he fails again. And he spends his turn attempting to wrestle it. Now, kind of sinking farther down to the ground. He's almost hands and knees at this point, trying to pull this, this thing off of him. All right, that will bring us to the top of the round, which is Mekin. So Mekin, who is now pinned to the ground, is going to, with his other hand, make a quick motion. And all of a sudden, you hit the dirt. And your blade is on nothing, as Mekin suddenly disappears and reappears over here as he has misty stepped away from you oh. uh, and found his, uh, his way out of the hold. Um, he's then going to turn towards Siki and he's going to say, I am so sorry. And he's going to cast hold person in your direction. Oh. All right, so Siki, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Come on, come on, be good, be good. 14. 
14 does save. Good. It does ten. Good. All right, so he attempts to hold you, and it doesn't quite take place. He's like, ah, damn it. The creature that has itself on top of Erevin is going to continue to claw at him now, holding him by the throat. That'll hit. That is, let's see here, six plus 11 points of damage to Erevin. And Erevin is all but unconscious at the moment. He is, his eyes are blinking and drooping and he's like, he can't take any air in, and it continues to be hit by the, the different attacks from this little creature. The Hellhounds. One gets its breath back, the other does not. The one in front of you, Siki, breathes in. And breathes fire at you again. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Dex? Really? Yes. Can you go on your shell or not? Ten? Reaction? That's Ten actually worse. Fails. So you take. Oh no. What? Oh, no. Come on, that's too many dice. Stop. Stop rolling. Stop. You're done. You take 26 points of fire damage. <sighs> I go down. Oh, and you go oh, unconscious. No. Come on. Oh, Seriously. Oh, oh this is on the fire. You don't want to lose your cleric. Oh, both of our clerics. Right? Come on, guys. The one by you, Hyde, takes a bite at you. At disadvantage? Yes. At disadvantage, yes. Uh, except oh. concentration <sighs> check. Mm. So it's the first roll, which was a 13 plus five, so an 18 to hit. That hits. So that does hit. Take eight points of piercing damage. Are you still up? Yeah. Plus 11 points of fire damage. Now I am not. Now you're down. Okay, so Hyde, you go unconscious. However, your giant wolf Luna is still there and there to protect you. Mm -hmm. All right. That brings us to Siki. I need you to roll a death save, please. Eight. That's a fail. So first failed death save. Oh my God. You can't I need you to roll death. <laughs> That's a two. That's a fail as well. So first failed death save. However, Luna is charged with protecting you, and this creature is biting at you. So what does Luna do? Uh, she's going to bite it right at, right at it back. Okay. That's going to be a 17 to hit. 17 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Plus your d4 mm -hmm. on top of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nineteen. Nineteen points of damage. Mm -hmm. Dang, nice. So she, with rage seeing you go down, bites down on the creature, which also needs to make a strength saving throw. Yes. Uh, which it does succeed. Um, and she thrashes it, and it doesn't quite throw it to the ground, but she knocks it off and does a good chunk of damage to it. Uh, there's little bits of burnt hair around her mouth now from where she bit on its fiery body, uh, but she doesn't seem to mind. So that brings us to Gamorg. You just watched two of your new allies go down. The third one has a creature attached to its neck and is almost out. Can I? So it'll, it'll burn half my movement to stand up, right? For you, with the athlete, athlete feet, it only burns five feet. Oh, sweet. Yep. So five feet. Can mm -hmm. I jump down? You can, yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so that'd be... So five feet to move to the edge. Yeah. So there's 10. And then jump, make a, make a athletics or acrobatics check. Uh, 23. Easy enough. I'll say it burns five more feet of movement to jump down. Five and mm -hmm. then 10. No, 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 that was 10. So five, 10, 15, 15 20, 25. 25. Yep. Okay, um, so I'm gonna uh, use my fighting spirit. Okay, so a bonus action fighting spirit. Get your plus five temporary hit points. Yeah, so, and that's yeah. added on to what? Correct, what you already Because I haven't had. lost any of that. Correct. So. Ooh, nice. Cool. So now your attack is at advantage. Yeah, so I'm gonna just go out, like come up behind him and as hard as I can, just slash across his back. Okay. That would be a 23. That hits, go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Ooh, nice. So, uh, that'd be 11 points of slashing damage. Okay, Mechan takes a knee on that one. It drops him, not unconscious, but he does take a knee as you 
cut across him with two quick slashes across the back with your double bladed scimitar. And he hits the deck, and he turns on, he's like, it wasn't personal. <sighs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Erevin is going to attempt to free himself one last time. He rolled a nine on his check, and it rolled a four. With the last bit of strength, he pries the jaws from this tiny little imp-like creature and throws it away from him. Clutching his hand to his throat, he stands up, and with his last about amount of breath that he's got, he turns towards you, Seeky, and casts Healing Word at third level, I'm sorry, second level. This is crazy. You regain nine points of healing. Okay. And you come conscious. Cool. That will be his turn, which brings us back to Mekin. Mekin looks up at you and says, you don't know what this is. You don't know why I'm doing this. You would understand if you would just listen. And he tries to stab up at you with his dagger. Uh, that is a nine to hit. Slippery boy. You slap it out of the way. You see it coming. <laughs> no. Just, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> None of this. Uh, the creature, the imp-like creature, uh, attempts to attack Erevin again and rolls a natural one. Oh, good. So it goes to swipe <laughs> up at him and Erevin, you know, almost on death's door, Dodges at the last minute, determined to not get attacked by this creature again. Uh, and it goes wide. Um, the Hellhounds, um, the one towards you, Seeky, has it had seen you fallen. It had already turned away in order to begin to protect its master. It is going to rush you. Good morning. Do I get an attack of opportunity since it's running away uh, from you? You could. It would be a disadvantage because you're on the ground. That's fine. It does not gain its fire breath back, though. Okay. Would I be using. Uh, your Warhammer. Warhammer? Yeah. Okay. Because you're not a Warcaster. So it's at disadvantage? At disadvantage. Okay. Okay. So 13? 13 misses, unfortunately. Okay. It hits the That's ground okay. instead of it okay. as it runs away. So it attempts to bite you, Gamorg. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. That hits. That does hit. Okay. You take six points of piercing damage and three points of fire damage as it bites at you. Um, hide. The one near Luna is going to attempt to bite back at her and fight her. Okay. Um, that is going to be a 15 to hit Luna. That misses. And that misses as she knocks it out of the way with her superior large form. Um, it is then going to turn and try to run back this direction towards its mate. Does Hyde want, or does Luna want the attack? Oh yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. she does, she does. <laughs> of course she does. It's a natural one. Unfortunately, bites away, and does on she a get the table? one, it does trigger the roll table. <laughs> so, a giant oh. Luna on the loose. <laughs> so, nothing happens. Hmm. Luna is able oh. to act normally. That's good. Okay. So. She just loses her. Well, she makes the attack, Okay. Got but it. It's a natural one that misses badly. Cool. Uh, she actually bites into the dirt and kind of <laughs> comes okay. away, okay. snarling a bit. Okay. That brings us back to Seeky. You are on the ground, uh, but you have nine hit points and the creature has moved away from you. I'm going to cast a healing word for my bonus action. I'm going to cast that at third level. Okay. Third so level that healing would word. be, all right, so that would be 3d4 plus 5. So that's going to be my bonus one, action. Um, it's 3d4 plus your wisdom modifier. Plus my, oh, spellcasting ability modifier. Yeah. So that would be plus 2. Okay. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points back to you. 7 points? Yep. Okay. All right. And I'm going to use my action to channel divinity. Okay, so you're trying to turn yes. the creatures. Oh, yep. snap. All right. All right. So is it within 30 feet? Yes. They are both within 30 feet. Okay. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. What is the DC? DC is... Wow. <laughs> 1,000. <laughs> 13. So the first one rolls a 20. <gasps> Quick. 
course it is. Second one rolls a 12. Okay, so the second one has to take its turn moving away from me, can't take reactions, and can only dash or dodge. Okay, well done. Hi, you're up. You are down, but you're up. Cool. Question. Oh, um, sorry, sorry. Can I back up a little bit? Can I say that I stood up? Yes. Stood With up. my movement? Yep. We'll and are they running away from me? They will be, yeah, because they'll be frightened of you, essentially. All right, I want to move up about 10. I just want to, like, chase it. <laughs> so make sure it's still running okay, away from like me. Okay, like here? Yeah. Okay, good. so this one won't be running. This one will be. Just. So oh, down. never mind. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, back up. Okay. <laughs> um, can I... Can I get some cover if I go behind this little half wall thing? Like, could, I still yeah. want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to, like, yeah. peek. Yep, you can have, like, okay. half cover back there. Sounds good. That's what I want to do. Sorry, go ahead. Cool. Um, I'm going to use uh, Luna's, like, uh, fur to get up. <sighs> um, and I'm going to take up my bow and I'm going to aim at. I'm going to do Hunter's Mark on. Wait, do I still have spells? So you've used Pass Without Trace twice, you've used Hunter's Mark once. Cure wounds. And cure wounds. So that's four. Okay. So no, I don't have spell slots. I'm out of spell slots. Um, I'm just going to aim at uh, Mechan, and I'm going to shoot at him with my bow. It's going to be a 15 to hit. 15 hits. Cool. Uh, Six points of damage. The arrow goes shooting towards him. Hits him in the chest, deep in the chest. Mechan topples forward onto the ground. And you see a pool of blood underneath begin to form and you hear Erevin scream out, no, no! All right, that's your first attack. Okay, I'm gonna grab onto Luna and I'm gonna be like, finish him, girl. And I'm going to let her go. And she's going to go and attack him while he's down. Okay, so she runs forward and attacks with advantage. Not sure. Oh, I don't know if that's cocked. Oh, is it, it cocked? Well, I don't know. It, it was, and then it, like, tilted did, back. Did you touch it? I didn't touch it. Then it's not cocked. Okay, cool. Well, that's a natural 20. Natural 20. Okay. So if you want to move her forward. Yeah. Really big. Natural 20. Oh, and she's <laughs> twice <giant> her <laughs> size. Does the D4 um, add it to the enlarge? Do I double that dice as well? You do. Okay. You double all the dice. Okay. Dope. That's amazing. 36 points of damage. 36 points of damage. <laughs> it's, it's an instant two death saves lost. Okay. As she bites into him and rips into him. Mm-hmm. And that's her turn. That's it. Okay. That'll bring us to Gamork. Um, so, okay. So do I know, like, would I understand what happened with, with the spell and like that this one's going to run away? Uh, make an Arcana check. Arcana or Religion. Uh, that would be 18. 18? You're familiar with the turn ability that clerics use, although what exactly may happen, you're not 100% sure, but you've seen it done in the past okay. in your adventures. So I am going to attack this one. Okay. With my scimitar. Okay, you don't have advantage. Right. Okay. So that would be uh, 13 to hit. 13 misses, unfortunately. You hit more fire than you do flesh on the attack. Well, that's it. Okay. That will bring us to Erevin, who is still up miraculously. Um, he is going to... Heal yourself. He is going to cure wounds himself. <laughs> um, he better. And get... Uh, seven points back. And then he is going to use his bonus action to turn and the closest person he sees is Gamorg, so he throws out a healing word towards you, Gamorg. Sweet. Um, so that is six points of healing back to you. And that will, and then he will use his turn to back away as far as he can. Um, 
However, not being a battle cleric, he doesn't realize he just took an attack of opportunity uh, from the creature, which does hit him. And as the creature hits him and he attempts to back out, oh, come on. Erevin goes down unconscious. Mm, good. So, as it's just enough, even with the healing that he took, to, to knock him back out. That brings us to Mekin. Mekin will make a death save. The last one. And that will be an 11. Oh. So he does succeed his first death save. Or his, he's lost two and he succeeded one. Uh, the creature goes invisible again. It disappears from the map. The hellhounds. The first one. He would run away, wouldn't yep, he? Yep, he would. The first one though bites out at you, Gamorg, as you've just been attacking it. And that is a 23 to hit. So you take um, six points of piercing damage and seven points of fire damage. Uh, the other one turns and dashes can I off that direction. Attack of opportunity. You absolutely can, yep. 16. 16 hits, go and roll damage. What about Luna? Luna would also get an attack of opportunity, yes. Giant Luna. So that would be... Um, it's 11 for me. 11 points of damage. Uh, miss on Luna's end. And 11 points of damage? Yeah. Nice. So you swipe at the back of its paw as it goes, and as it goes, it's now limping away from you guys. But it does dash and take its uh, additional full movement. And just to clarify, this is like open, and that's like the elements out there, or is it more building? There, there's a couple more layers of building, but then okay. it's elements past that. Okay. Yep, and then more ruins, maybe a quarter mile out past that. Okay. All right, that will bring us to Seeky. Okay, I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on the cleric dude. So that's gonna be a bonus action. I'm gonna do that at first level. Right? Okay. First level, yes. Two, uh, three. Three points of healing, <laughs> okay, but he is conscious. And I guess I'll use my action to cast Guiding Bolts at the wolf thingy. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack. Okay. That's 21. 21 hits, we're nice. damaged. That's 10. 11, 21 points. Nice, 21 points of damage. And it has advantage on the next attack. The next attack against it has advantage. Yes, that's what I meant. What a bad spell! <laughs> no, no, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. All right, well done. So that brings us to Hyde and Luna. I am going to shoot at Mekin. Okay. He is incapacitated, which gives you advantage, but it is a ranged attack on the ground, so it's canceled out, so it's a straight roll. Cool. Natural 20. Natural 20, are you serious? I'm again? serious, it's oh right there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the yeah, arrow sinks into him. the back of Mekin's neck, and any semblance of life that was left in this boy disappears. <sighs> Are the creatures still there? They are still there. Okay. The one hellhound you can see, the other one has, the one little creature disappeared and the one hellhound bolted and ran. So the little, the little creature, can I, like with Luna, can she kind of like smell around and try to? She could take her turn to make a perception check. Got yeah. it, she'll do that. Okay. And I will give her advantage because it is smell base that she's going for. <laughs> Two twos. Two twos. Not she does go. not catch it. It is mm -hmm. it is gone, mm -hmm. as far as she knows. Yeah. That'll bring us to Gamork. All right, so I am going to attack this guy. Okay. So that would be an advantage, right? Um, yes, it would be because of the guiding bolt. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Okay, so... It'd be 14. 14 just misses. So unfortunately, just misses. You go wide with your double bladed scimitar. Maybe one too many flourishes as you went to attack it. Okay, karma man. I'll come back to you. All right, and that will bring us to uh, Erevin, 
who will make a death save. Oh, I she healed he's them. He's back. That's right. He has three points of healing. Three Thank points. you. So he will spend half his movement to stand up. And then he will, let's see, what will Aravind do? Can you heal anybody else? <laughs> um, let's see if he can. Let's see here. So he will cast a healing word in your direction. Um, yes, yeah, he'll do a first level healing word in you. Uh, so that'll be six points of healing back. Ervin will then touch himself on the chest and cast Cure Wounds for himself. And that is a one that he just rolled, which is lovely. So he gets an additional three back. Yay. <laughs> six That's points. He's nice six points. <laughs> Very useful high-level cleric. <laughs> All right. That brings us to what would be Mechan, but Mechan is dead. You do not see the invisible creature reappear. The hellhound near you, Gamorg, does not get its breath back, does make an attack at you, rolls a three, that misses. The other hellhound doesn't seem to return. So, with one hellhound left to deal with, Siki, you are up. Okay. Oh, why not? How wise could they be? I'm gonna cast Spirit Guardians. Okay. I'm gonna hold up my Warhammer and I'm gonna come charging at that, that thing. Spirit Guardians is a bonus action, right? It's an action. It's an action. Okay, so you don't have an attack then. But you do get within range, which means at the start of his turn, it'll get triggered. I guess I'll bonus action spiritual weapon and try him with okay, that. Okay, you'll put the spiritual weapon back out there. All kinds and of weapons. To hit him. <laughs> yes. All right, so that Roll would attack. be attack. Um, that's a 10. 10 does not hit, unfortunately. Yeah, that's okay. So it misses, but you are within range for the spirit guardians. That brings us to Hyde and Siki. Okay, and Luna? I'm sorry, Hyde and Luna. <laughs> okay, so I have this really cool thing that I hope works. I'm gonna go by Luna, if yeah. I can reach. I think, yeah, with my 30 movement. 30 feet, yeah. Yeah, should be fine. Um, I want to use my Detect Thoughts medallion, which lets me detect thoughts of any creature within 30 feet of me. Okay. And I wanna see if I can find that invisible creature. They don't oh, have to be visible for me to detect that. But not. the caveat is that if the creature has an intelligence of three or lower, mm -hmm. um, it is unaffected and I cannot detect its thoughts. Okay. okay. And what's the range on it? Uh, 30 feet at any direction. 30 feet any direction? At all directions. Okay. So you use your action to cast detect thoughts. Let me come up empty. Okay. Well, I, can, I detect all of them, but. Right. But, not but you, right? For. You get you get the the adrenaline and the fear mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. all the different people in combat. You get nothing from Mechan, but nothing from any sort of little imp-like creature. It doesn't <clears> seem it's within thirty feet of you. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my boat to the Hellhound and fire off the shot. Uh, well, you've used your action. That to would do be the spell. My, oh, and I can't do. It has to be. And an you have to attack that. first to take a okay. second attack. Never so mind. That is Sorry. your turn. Um, can I use? Oh, no, I can't even use my second action for anything. It has right. to be an attack. Right. Got it. Cool. Yep. cool, 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 cool. All righty. Gamorg. Cool. I'm going to attack again. Oh, dang it. Uh, but is it still at It is not. No, it was only okay. the one attack. There was the next. So you could have given yourself Fighting Spirit. If you want to still do that, I'll allow it. Yeah, I'll do it. It's up to you. Okay. Okay. You want to kiss it? I know this is a new character. <laughs> Give it a little kiss. Oh, it's still not going to hit. 14 just misses. But you do get your extra five healing. Yeah. Five uh, or temporary points. Right. All right. Well, so you unfortunately swing in with all your rage and anger, and you don't quite get there. Um, that brings us to Erevin, who is going to cast Sacred Flame at the creature, and it makes it save. So unfortunately nothing happens as the divine fire mixes in with the normal fire and doesn't seem to have any effect. So, top of the round, that brings us to the Hellhound. Does not get its breath back. It is surrounded by enemies. Let's see what happens here. So it needs to make a wisdom saving throw. That's true, yes. For what? So I'll roll for that. For spirit, oh, that's spirit guardians. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is a 13 plus one, so a 14. So it, but its but it still speed is still damage, halved. Correct? Yes. All right. So, two, nine, eleven. So eleven halved. 
Okay, so that'd be five, because okay. we round down. All right. Are they the butterflies still? Yes. So the little butterflies yep. begin to eat into its flesh a little bit and kind of is snapping at them, <laughs> trying to kill them, but nothing happens as they are incorporeal. All right. It is going to then look around at how completely surrounded it is. Giant Luna, just. <laughs> Giant Luna is right there. <sighs> and it is going to attempt to bolt this direction. So do we both get attacks of We both get attacks of opportunity, okay. and it is going to try to dash and run away. So um, Gamorg and Siki can both make attacks Would of opportunity. Would I be making Doing it with spirit guardians? No, you'd just be a hammer or a war hammer. Attack. War hammer. Okay. Okay. As it's running away, I yes. just like kind of like sidestep in front of it just a little bit, and I come around like this, mm -hmm. right, trying to get to its face. Okay. Ooh. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. <laughs> Dang. I love how you nice. came up with a description now. <laughs> that twenty. Smart move. Smart move. Nice. Yeah. All, right, All right. So, so roll your two d four. Double that. Six, so 12 plus, so it'd be 16 points of slashing. Damage. 16 points of slashing damage. One second here. Doesn't quite oh, kill it, okay. but it is looking rough. So As you then step in, yep. Siki. Okay. That would be an 11. 11 misses, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. It takes a lot of damage from Gamorg, but your attack swings wide and it then dashes 100 feet away. Oof. Wow. As it goes almost out of range of most Fast. any attack. It is now 100 feet away from you, Siki. Okay. All right, so it is your turn. Okay. Um, could it dash? Because speed is halved. Speed is halved while it's in that, correct? Right, but it would have taken twice as much to get out of there. I'll say that it got 50 feet away. Okay. I'll say it's it's 50 feet away at this point. Okay. Um, so I'm going to firebolt it. Okay. So let's see. <laughs> Spell attack. Natural one. Natural one. <laughs> Your firebolt actually hits the creature and mingles with the fire that already exists on its body. It and you work. think that maybe fire is not going to hurt a fire elemental being. Okay. That's it. All right. So... Hyde and Luna. Okay, um, I'm going to to take Luna by the the snout, kind of, and I'm gonna try to see if we can find that tiny invisible creature. Okay. Um, can she smell for it? And if I'm helping, can I give her advantage? So how are you helping her smell? Mm, that's a good point. And she's already attempted to smell for it and didn't find so, it. Correct? She did. Yeah. So can she not do it again if if it's? She could try again. I mean, if she wants to use her turn for that, but she has tried this once before. This might be silly, but if she's a bigger dire wolf, wouldn't she have twice as big a nose? So couldn't she smell twice as well? <laughs> I'm just saying. It's fine. It's fine. She's already got advantage. You can't get double okay. advantage. Okay. I didn't know she had so advantage. Okay. Good okay. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. That's okay. Um, it's worth asking. It's worth an ask. It's worth an ask. I respect it. I really want to try to find this invisible creature, so... Yeah, Luna's gonna smell for it again, okay. and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look around, and Luna's gonna smell. Go ahead and roll perception at advantage. Okay. And you're doing the same. So I'm you're, going. You're I'm looking for... around, and Luna's smelling around. Okay. So roll for Luna first. Perception at advantage. Oh, at advantage. Because mm -hmm. it's smell based. <sighs> Dope. Oh, that's Luna, not me. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Perception, perception. Uh, that's gonna be a twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. So Luna takes a moment, sniffs, 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 and comes back to you and gives you a telltale sign based on your shorthand that you have. Like, she doesn't pick any scent up. <clears throat> okay. You look around, make a perception check. Not good. Uh, 10. And you don't see anything. No sign of the creature. Okay. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, Gamork. Well, I don't have any. Can can with the red bonus action maybe can I be like the the invisible frog is gone? <laughs> maybe. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> no, you can say that out to them. Yeah. Um, He's gone. Okay. <laughs> good. Well, I don't know if it's good. 
I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, so I can't I can't reach the the wolf. Um, so I mean, you're gonna hold your turn, maybe, or yeah, I think hold, so. so you can hold an action. Um, so maybe like hold an attack. I'll just until be you like see a ready threat. to just spring if if I need to. Sounds good. All right, that'll bring us to Erevin. He is going to use his last first level spell slot to cast Detect Magic. And he's going to do a quick sweep of the area and say, I don't sense a creature anywhere, a magical creature. That table of books needs to be looked at. That thing on the shelf needs to be looked at. But we need to get rid of that Hellhound first. And that will be his turn. That will bring us to the Hellhound. Does not get its breath back. Now it dashes. It is 150 feet away. 150? 150 feet away. It was 50 before. Now it's 150. We'll say that we're out of combat. Do we really need to stop the Hellhound? Like, can't we just let him go? It's a beast from the Abyssal Plain. It's going to wreak havoc somewhere, but I suppose there's not much in this area to wreak havoc on. We'll find it eventually. Someone needs to look at those books. I'm going to need a moment. If everyone needs some healing, um, gather around. And then he begins to cast and f- over the next 10 minutes um, and cast Prayer of Healing, which gives 12 points of healing to anyone who needs it. Okay, mm-hmm. I will take I will that. take it. <sighs> nice. All right, if someone wants to check out what's going on up there, I'm going to, he kind of looks at the body of Mech and he's like, going to begin rites. Walks over to him and begins muttering and clutching his holy symbol and kind of pulling the arrows out of the body of the fallen boy, turning him over, placing his arms, closing his eyes, praying prayers that you're very familiar with, Siki, from the temple. I'm, I'm sorry, but it had to be done. We can talk later. Right now, he he needs rights. Understood. And uh, Siki, come come with me. We should probably go up there. I'm going to take my spiritual weapon and guardians with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, the butterfly. So it's still hovering above me. Yep. I'm like, <laughs> yep. All right, so we go and check out the books yes. in the table. I'm gonna kind of like walk up behind you guys, just watch. All right. Um, who's checking what? I'll check you the should, books. You should probably check the books. Yeah. And I'll check the body right here. Okay. See, you go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. Not Arcana. Investigation <laughs> to start. Okay. Eight. Eight. It's a lot of books. Um, you do flip them open and begin looking, and there are a lot of spell books, um, books on the history of the arcane, um, books on the different gods, um, which is interesting because this is more information than your, than the library at the Temple of Enor normally has. I'm not sure where these may have come from. One book in particular is open to a specific page. And as you look and begin reading, it is talking about a fairly, a, a known but less known, less talked about god who goes by the name of Stith. It rings a bell as you have training and, and education in all of the, the gods of the realm. Uh, even though they have not spoken in a millennia and many doubt their existence at this point, uh, you begin, you, you continue to, to learn and, and study about them. Stith in particular is known as the god of pestilence. And it is fairly common lore that his goal is to return to this material plane and spread his rot and his destruction as far as he can. Uh, Hyde, go ahead and roll an investigation check for the body. 13. 13. As you look at this creation on this altar, it is a horrific, horrific sight. It is a body, but it is a body that has been stitched together from other parts. You recognize goblin ear, a 
bugbear leg, hands from trolls, all sorts of different monsters, monsters that you are familiar with hunting, have been stitched and stitched into this form that sits before you. It seems to be lifeless, but it is hideous, and who knows what Mechan was trying to do with it. What did you find out? Well, there's a lot of books about like different gods and, you know, stuff like that. And there's this one that's like kind of mentioning this god Stith. Mm. And I don't know, do you think like he was trying to bring, do you think like that is what Stith is supposed to be? Are there any like pictures on the page, like any illustrations? There's no illustrations no. that you came across. Okay. Just, just text. Okay. What should we do with this creature? Should we take off the head so it doesn't have a chance to... Does it have a head? It has a head, yeah. Okay. A head of a human? Probably. Or, uh, it's not a human. Um, humanoid. A humanoid to some degree. It looks like it could have been maybe a hobgoblin, something in the middle size of, of the goblinoid race. Should we ask wizard guy? Hmm. He Should doesn't we? even turn around. He just, from where he is doing rights, he's like, it is a flesh golem. I don't know what he was trying to do with it, but bringing it to life would be not advantageous for us. Yeah, we should probably try to kill it. Should I burn it? You should burn it, that, yes. That seems the most, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna sacred flame it. Okay, you hit it with a sacred flame. Uh, it burns a little bit. Um, doesn't seem to like catch the body on fire or anything. As Sacred Flame doesn't do that. Sacred oh. Flame is more of like an instantaneous. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me try again. Firebolt. <laughs> Firebolt. <laughs> the entire that, body <laughs> lights into flame much quicker than you would have even expected. It seems like it's... You know, a, a, flammable. It's very flammable, very uh, prone to, to burning. And before long, the body is reduced to ash and charred bones. What about that uh, that invisible creature? The, the, uh, the, yeah. It used to be a float. Do you think that that has something to do with this? I feel like that was probably tied to Mechan. Mm -hmm. And so when he died, that probably like went back with him, you know, to wherever he, right. I, I don't know, whatever plane he went to. I can't find him anymore, so Yeah. It's, we'll have to deal with him later. I guess so. Can I? take the books and put them in my mm -hmm. backpack. Into your haversack. Yeah. Be Before haversack. that happens, can I just look to see if there's any books I recognize or anything like that? Roll a, um, roll a history check. 17? 17. Not much of a reader. And they look like they're all magic based. Not really your thing. I don't like these books. There's no <laughs> pictures. Okay. I'll take them. There's no pictures. I'll draw some here. pictures for okay. you. Good. Actually, can I pull up my sketchbook and like draw a pic, like, from the best of my memory of what that thing looked like before yeah. we burned it. Go ahead and roll a performance check. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm looking over your shoulder. Here. Ooh, okay, 15. 15. It's, it, you get most of it, as best you can tell, the detail down there, the long tail, the, the long pointed ears, the sharp, jagged little teeth. Um, and Hyde, you kind of look over her shoulder and she's getting better. It's, it's not pretty, amazing, it's but she's getting good, better. Pretty good. It looks good, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And I did some shading. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. The, yeah. the dots technique. That's yeah. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. pretty good. I learned that from somewhere. Yes. Are there any different colored inks on the table? Uh, you look, you don't see any inks per se. It's just books. It's just no, books. There's no, no writing like utensils. Writing okay. No. Okay. I'll just take the books then. Okay. So you collect the books in your haversack. Erevin finishes giving rights to Mechan, the body there. He's like, well, what's the plan? What are we doing with him? What did you find out? How are we getting home? He sits down, oh gods, how are we getting home? He kind of just looks out towards the wasteland beyond him. Edivan, I thought that was your job. This was a one-way ticket. I, the magic is, is strong to, to get us here. I don't have this as something I can just do. Can I look in the table or maybe in the haversack to see if I see any scrolls like we did before mm -hmm. that contain something similar to what we found before? Roll a investigation check. 20. 20. You don't find anything. I don't know. 
Could I look f in the magic books? I don't know like which ones look more magical than others. Roll an arcana check. Okay, can I tell you what I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I'm, I'm kind of looking for the same, I'm looking for a scroll or I'm looking for like an incantation that looks similar to the scroll we had. Okay. Type of thing. What, yeah, which one is it? Check. Arcana. <laughs> Natural one. Don't find anything in relation to what transportation or teleportation <sighs> magic. What are we gonna do? Well, are there any scrolls of any kind? There are none that you've found. No scrolls, just, just books. books. Yeah. Okay. If you guys like all get together and like magic super hard at the same time, <laughs> would that help? Can we magic super Come hard? On. I don't know if you understand magic. <laughs> That I'm, I don't understand magic, but I can tell you that's not how it works. Yeah, not really. It's a good thought, though. As you guys group yourselves, talking together, trying to figure out what to do next, and look out at the wasteland before you, Hide of Beast, Sikiathanthwe, Gamorg, and Erevin, you wonder, how are we getting home? And that's where season one of the first watch will end. Ah, yes. Yes. Stranded. Yay. Stranded. In a way, stranded. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank that was you. Blast. That was awesome.